Hello, welcome to the Slip Slip Sis podcast. I'm Che. I'm Gabs. And this is our YouTube channel where we share about our knitting, our designing, um, just the fun things that we like to do together or the hilarious things that happen to us as well. You can find us on Instagram as slip.slip.sis and then on Ravelry as slip slip sis. Um, we will have everything um, and the ways you can find us and contact us linked below. Today is technically Saturday, July 31st. However, this will be our August podcasts were early we're on it because some of us will be going back to our actual jobs soon not me gabs i work through the summer so we wanted to get a head start so we didn't miss this month gabs anything i forgot it's episode three there it is this is why there's two of us <laughs> so july was a really big month for us and a little bit of june um we had three designs come out in July and I actually just got one of them back. So we're going to share the designs that came out. Last episode, we talked about the drought tolerant cow, which is currently being tested. You can check out some of our um, pictures on Instagram. And then we we both got some designs we're working on their whips right now. So we will show them in our whip section. But the first pattern that came out, it was really in June with the sun and fog collective, but the rights reverted back to us in July. So it's kind of like a June, July release. I got our fence post socks back in the mail. They're on the wrong size sock blockers, but this is the most gorgeous yard. It's a merino cashmere nylon blend, which I said, treat your feet. And Jaylee loved that I said that. She was like, girl, you should treat your feet. Um, so this is actually our very first sock design um, back in March. It's been kind of in production for a while. This is um, a colorway by Little Skein in the Big Wool and Valley. She is a San Francisco Bay Area designer. She makes the most beautiful stuff. She also has this really cute dog named Molly, a beagle. So you should just give her a follow if you like dogs. She also does a lot of sewing um, garment things. So if you want to give her a follow, that would be super cool. The next thing that came out was my sister's twisted sister sock, which was a play on fence post. Chaley, do you want to tell them how that came about? So what had happened was, is that Gabs really started designing and then she didn't tell me she's doing it because we have this thing called pride and we don't want anyone to know if we fail. So when she applied, she didn't tell anybody because then that would just be embarrassing if she wasn't accepted. Then she was, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could totally, I, my sister can do this. I could do this. Easy schmeasy. So I had this great idea. It was actually going to be a design inspired by our mom. Because whenever we do, our mom is like a queen, but not artsy at all. The rest of us love all the things our dad's really into working with his hands. Mom, she sits there and talks to us. But when we do family and snacks, snacks, she has the snacks and she keeps us hydrated. Like yes, that. Drink water. Yes, that's our mom. Um, but when we do, we sometimes we have to do family crafts. Like we just, everyone has to participate. That's the rule. She always does dots. Like we're painting pottery. It's dots. We're, I don't even know other things that we do. We're doing something else. It's dots. She Coloring goes, when she colors with my daughter. Yep. I'm decorating Easter eggs, dots, dots, always the dots. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do dot socks and they're going to be mom's dot socks. And then I knitted it and it was really ugly. And it looked <laughs> like dots. And I was like, oh my God, I can't name this ugly pattern after our mother. Like that would be horrible. So then I was like, all right, we're just going to scrap the dot idea. And I'm throwing a little bit of this, maybe toss in a cable. And then I was like, ta-da! And it looks almost exactly like my sister's fence post socks because of like, there's like the twisted and then the, the pearl um, kind of rose with the columns. So there's a lot of ways you could take Twisted Sister. If you're like a fan of Grey's Anatomy, it's like the Meredith Christina thing. If you're a fan of the band, you could take it that way. I'm the Twisted Sister because it's a twist on my sister's socks. 
So I wanted to like honor that I was kind of a copier, but also like I added my own spin. So it's fine. And also she's my sister. So she kind of has to let me do these things. That was the story behind Twisted Sister. She totally little sistered it for all of those like big sisters out here who like have to, you know, like pioneer. You're the first one with the parents and they're experimenting on you. And then somehow the little one comes along and it's all of a sudden much easier. So that's kind of how this designing journey occurred too was, Y'all, designing a sock heel is not that easy. There were a lot of errors, but that's where we are. So in keeping with our kind of fence post twisted sister theme, um, we also have the slats on a pie cowl that is using a variation of the fence post pattern um, in a cowl form. This is a really um, nice silky blend by Chicken Coop you and your fancy yarn. <laughs> I know. Uh, Chicken Coop Dye Works, it came in a grab bag. This is where I actually copied my sister. When it comes to shipping and buying stuff, I copied Chaley because she is a shopper extraordinaire. I'm one of those like, should I buy it? Should I? I don't know. I it. Bought it. So <laughs> um, this came in, this was, I think, back in June or July of last summer. It was a, gra a mystery grab bag by Chicken Coop Dye Works. And um, either a portion or, or all of the proceeds went towards uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, yes, Chaley, is that correct? Yes, I think it was um, also the, the funds for folks that had, because, was, who were protesting, who needed mm. like, legal support. Yes, for bail funds and that kind of there thing. There it is. Chaley and I were all about that, right? We I got that together. We got there together. What? So we, I got this beautiful skein of yarn, but it was, it's, um, I think it's mulberry silk, which isn't great for socks because I'm mega clumsy. So I would definitely wipe the heck out if I had silk socks on. Um, so I got it. I made this cowl. It's, uh, it's been released. All of our patterns, the three that we just showed are out on Ravelry and Ribbler. You can check them out in our Instagram bio or just search for us. Yes, Che Che. Do you remember why you got that yarn? No. Do you remember how we both bought something, um, but mine shipped first? <gasps> oh, yes. So the dyer and the owner of a Chicken Coop Dye Works is, she's also a lovely big sister. And um, I something happened where I was like trying to figure out what ship, Chaley's shipped first and I was jealous. So then I DM'd her and I was like, hey, what's going on? And she was super sweet about it. I think she, there was like a, that was when we had all those shipping delays. So I think she kind of got caught up in a shipping delay, which I know is still a big struggle, especially for dyers. It's gotta be so stressful. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, you, no worries, but you know how it is. My little sister got it. So I'm trailing behind and she's a big sister as well. So I ended up with two skeins of this. Terrible. Yarn. So, and I've knit with both of them. Um, I knit this lots on a pie cowl with the, um, it's, it was a no name colorway. So I think it was a one of a kind. And then um, she sent me this really pretty red and black and white yarn as well that I knit socks I, by Dawn Henderson. It was the witchy socks that was, they were beautiful, but y'all a corrugated rib. I can't roll like that. <laughs> um, so you can check this out on our Instagram. That was She's a brilliant designer, but I cannot roll with a color work corrugated rib. I was real rough. So I don't know how we got here, but those are, we are. Our, those are our three designs. We'll talk about our other ones that are working on in whips right now. Let's do FOs. Che, what you got? I have two. How many you got? Uh, Technically, I have three. I like four. Okay, so you go and I'll be the I'll be the filling. Somehow that's my whole life. Gabs goes first and then Chaley gets to be the juicy center. See what I mean? Big sisters. I got socks. So <laughs> I have socks. We're real organized, y'all. It's like 90 degrees right now. I'm sweating in my tank top. I have, this is from the May Yarnable box. I cranked the tube on my circular sock machine. Her name is Geraldine. Um, I cannot remember what this pink colorway. It's from Hypnotic Yarn. Chaley, do you remember? It's happened to us last month and we didn't look <laughs> it up again. I want to say Blossom or Cherry Blossom. Okay. We're named, it's now that, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, Cheryl. 
<laughs> it ha- we get it. It happens too long. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. I I do too. Um, we did. I did. Con- we always do. Contrast heels, toes, and cuffs. This is the colorway Stitch from Molly Klein Design. I got it from the her Lilo and Stitch Mystery um, mini skein set. I actually got it from my husband for Valentine's Day. He was so bummed. He got it for me. It was a secret. And then um, Molly Klein and I were DMing on Instagram. She's like, oh, I'm shipping your Lilo and Stitch set. And I was like, Lilo and Stitch shut. And then like, at the sa- I said it out loud. And at the same time, she typed like, oh no. And my husband's face was like, what? And I was like, oh shoot, this was a summer. Regardless, I was pleased to get it. Um, this is the colorway Stitch. It totally looks like Stitch too, right? With a little purple and the blue. I made a twisted rib, which is the classic. I, I always think of it like the Tristan, it's the Tristan Molina because a lot of her um, sweaters have a twisted rib. So I always think I'm doing the Tristan. Um, but I did a different kind of bind off. I did a Icelandic bind off, I think, um, that one of our testers, uh, Tiffany, talked about for slots on a pie. And I'm, I'm a teacher. I like to learn new things. Um, <laughs> I'm always trying to learn something new. So I, on these is where I experiment with the different kinds of cuffs and kind of think my sister's looking at me like, I don't do that. See, this is the big sister thing, right? You, you forge ahead and then I'll, I'll convince her into this Icelandic bind off in like two months that it's great. like a thousand years. I'm not doing the Icelandic bind off. <laughs> so it's very, it, 45 minutes later, your thing is bound off. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so this is our, my May. I have, I cranked the June and the July is sitting in the box. I have not done that. Shaylee, your socks. I have not received the July yet because it's sitting in the box that she gets to receive since we splits the yarn of all. So my socks, I do not have here because they ended up being a gift Um, A friend of mine is moving to Portland. I'm in Southern California and she's moving to Portland. Um, So we actually went on a camping trip. Uh, I don't camp. We don't camp. We, I respect it. I affirm that it is an exciting adventure for most folks. Not us. Not, we don't camp. Nope. It's not good. We're complainers. We get, we get hungry all the time. We go to the bathroom all the time whiny it's not good so but another friend of mine it was her birthday and she was like I'm gonna get Chaley and I was like all right it's her birthday like I gotta show up so we went on a camping trip in New Kuyama California it was just a pit of heat and dust um so all we could do was sit under the tin roof of the little kitchen area because if it was a yurt but inside the yurt it was about seven to 10 degrees hotter than outside. So everyone was, cr- there was five of us and crammed under this tin roof. And I'm sitting there knitting while three of them are playing Yahtzee. And then grandpa Joe, Joe is just one year younger than me, but he and I are the oldest of the group was sitting in his, this chair that fo- fell all the way back and he had a shade over and he was napping. So I was knitting on the socks and they're supposed to be for me. Don't tell Catherine this, but then I finished them and they were too big. She happens to be half a size bigger than me and she was leaving and I'm like, oh, she's going to love it. It was like, I was knitting the socks and we were together. I got her some nice wine and I'm like, I'm a freaking genius. So I gave her, she has the socks. I will put in a picture of the socks. It was the I new yarn to me. I got it at Joanne's. Um, it was the lion brand Manny Petty that I showed last time. It was like doing this cool, like sunset ombre thing in the, it was the mittens colorway. I do believe it's discontinued now though. Cause I tried to look it up and they didn't have it anymore. And then I did a contrast toe and heel and it was in from 29 bridges, their urban colorway. And I got that teeny tiny little skein of it um, through my Carnival of Color subscription through Row One Yarn. So those sockers are done and very excited about them. She loved them. She thought it was very meaningful. uh, And I just looked like a really thoughtful friend. So there you go. All right. I've got my Sanderson. So I have my 
Sanderson sweater, Chaley and I test knit for Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde Yarn. She's got a bajillion sweaters coming out right now. I think we've showed a couple of them. We, she's got Rune, which is already out, and Wood Woes, which is coming out shortly. But um, the one I have right here is my Sanderson. Um, it's got a, it's kind of like a turtleneck, but I have a really tiny neck. So it's going to have to be like double. Chaley has a very stout. Oh my gosh. Do you remember neck? when you were measuring me for like, you were making me a costume and all of our measurements, like lengthwise were the same. And I was like, why are we like, why are we not the same height? Cause I'm at least two inches taller than you. And then neck. my neck and my <laughs> neck is like two inches longer than your neck. So I don't know if I'm like a giraffe or you're like a stump or we're a little bit of both. <laughs> Probably both. Um, so I'm going to have to cuff mine down. It's um, a sport weight sweater. I held lace weight with fingering weight because it's California. So I don't usually rock a sport weight. It's too hot. Um, this is Dancing in the Moonlight by Molly Klein Design held with um, Oro Viejo from Manos de Uruguay. Um, and it's really cool. Chaley did one too. I'm sure she'll show hers in a moment. It's, it's a raglan. It is top, it is bottom up, which was my first time doing bottom up. That's, I'm not going to lie. Bottom up is stressful for me. Cause I can't, you can't try it on as you go. Like I'm a big fan. That looks great on you, Che. I like it. Rock it. This is how it's actually kind of nice because it was in my closet. So it was very cold and now it's cooling my head. I might, I actually think it's a DK with mohair, Gabs. Oh, you're pretty right. Sure it's, Cause I did DK with mohair and I'm pretty sure I was like on the, on point. That's probably true. Um, what else did I do? That's the special features of, oh, I did a tubular bind off on mine. It made a really super sweet, cool hem. But y'all, I had to Kitchener it. I had to kit. If you've done a tubular bind up, I had to kitchen. And Chaley is laughing her butt off at me because I cannot Kitchener well. So here's the deal. I'm left-handed. Uh, our my grandma taught me. We had a knit when I was little. She's right-handed. I knit right-handed, which means when you knit right-handed, when it's time to Kitchener, you also have to Kitchener right-handed. So I had to use my non-dominant hand to Kitchener an entire cuff. It's terrible. There are many, many mistakes, but I have long hair. So I'm going to do this and it's going to be fine. It over anyways. So it's yeah, we're good. But the tubular bind off really did. This is the part that didn't have mistakes. It really did end up looking really nice and fancy, but man, Chaley, when Chay's around, I make Chaley Kitchener for me because it's not great, but oh my gosh, the most special feature of this Chaley, do you notice anything? Oh, might it be that there's no loose ends? What? No loose ends. I wove my ends in. Do you know why I wove my ends in? Because kitchenering was so hard. I needed a break. <laughs> so it was less painful to weave your ends in. <laughs> and I already had the tapestry needle out. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to do this. I want to do this anymore. <laughs> Okay, I also did a Sanderson, which you saw slightly earlier. This is how you model um, your sweaters, apparently. And I use Inspire a Mind uh, Hudson DK for that's the pinky colorway. What I love is there are little flecks of yellow in there. Can you see? A little bit. Yes, there are little flecks of like yellow in there. And then I held it with the Aloft mohair from Knit Picks in the white. Colorway. I thought I was going to get away with like, ah, oh, just use DK and it'll be fine. I'll get gauged, no dice. So luckily I had like an excess amount of a loft because Gabs discovered she doesn't like mohair. So I got all her mohair. So I actually had plenty, um, which is great. I did regular uh, bind off for my standard edition. Uh, but it was like, all I remember from the sweater is like having the whole thing on my lap and I don't have air conditioning in my condo. And I was like, sweating I can actually feel the beads of sweat rolling down my back when I'm like I'm gonna finish it I'm gonna finish it and it's gonna be great and I finished it and it was great okay next sweater which ling yes shall we go same same time okay okay on three you know what's interesting is my witch ling is almost the same color as yours <laughs> bless you thank you <laughs> all right Ready? One, two, three. 
da 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 Okay, mine's still wet because it was actually blocking, but I didn't want to have to insert a picture. So I just pulled out the blocking pins. <laughs> it's fine. You talk about it. All right, so this is our Witchling, which is another test. I think it's for Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde Yarn. <sighs> this was, this. they were all great. The sweaters are great, but we did four sweaters this summer. We've done four sweaters since June 1st and we did too much. Um, Cause they were all lovely and we couldn't say no. And she, you know, fabulous. Um, this is a raglan top down. So short rows. It's a very similar construction to Woodwose and Rune. It's a little bit of a closer fit for it. Um, it's got, and it's got color work at the bottom. So it's got this really cool moon goddess phases of the moon situation. Um, came out super cute. I did mine in um, Miracly, which is um, a destination yarn. It's when um, it's the championship color for when Cleveland was playing the Golden State Warriors for the NBA championships a couple of years ago. Um, and then my bottom blue, shoot. I got, I believe it's Bay Street Yarns, which she's no longer dying. We got it a few years ago at Stitches West. Um, mine looks, mine's got a, if you see it, it looks a little different than Chaley's. I am planning on steaking mine. So that's why it's got the steaking. Um, you can see the steaking panel, which I haven't steaked yet because I wanted to take finished object pictures for Tristan and make sure I had all the yardage. I do have the steaking panel in too, you can see, but I haven't done that yet because <gasps> You'll find out why we're, we're doing other stuff, of course. Um, Chaley, what's yours made out of? Mine is, again, Inspire a Mind. Uh, she's a dyer out of Santa Barbara, California, which is just hop, skip, and a jump from me. So I love it because then it ships in like a day and then I get it in my hot little hands and it's instant gratification. Um, this is her Penelope Sport Weight. And I'm kind of like really into the orangey color. Like at first I was like, oh my God, I'm going to look like a Cheeto. But I think it's kind of cute and it's just subtle. Like it's just a pop at the bottom. I just tried it on with my faux leather leggings and I was like, okay, my next clubbing sweater. Because um, that's what you wear to a club is a hand knit sweater. sweater. It's like kind of halloween -y. It's fine. In Southern California. My clubbing sweater. Um, when I hit the town, even though like, as you can see from my shirt, I don't do that very often, but I love it. It's actually really light. I thought I was gonna, I've never really done sport weight until like this summer with Tristan. And I really like um, the way the fabric feels on this one. I don't have any more. I have one more. So this is, I showed it last time, but it is done done. Um, this is the cute little sweater I was making for my daughter and um yes Jaylee I, I cannot see I, was, I don't care about your face yeah it's obvious I care about the sweater <laughs> so um a very helpful viewer of our podcast commented on episode two what the yarn she thought it was and she's totally right and I still don't speak Swedish so I still can't say it but she was totally right that it is that yarn um I finished sticking it. I put the button band on. You'll notice, look, the ends. What? I know. Who am I? Really, I wanted to try it on my daughter, and you can't have loose ends if you've got a toddler. And what I think makes this super special is I've got these really cute purple buttons, and you're like, yeah, guys, whatever, they're purple buttons. But my best friend, Hannah, bought me this yarn in Sweden when she was uh, there with her Mormor, which is her grandmother. Um, they went back to Sweden to see Mormor's hometown. And these buttons, more and more is moving. So she was downsizing. Um, so I got all of her sewing buttons. So these are more and more's buttons too. So it's like a whole more and more sweater. Hannah and I have been friends longer than my sister's been alive. Um, so Hannah's more and more is like my more and more. So I loved it. I think it's so sweet. It's so cute. I tried to put it on my daughter and she was like, nope, nope. Am I off, please? <laughs> Well, she said, please. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, please just wear it. Please just wear it so I can take a picture, please. <laughs> my poor husband, because he knows I've worked so hard on it. He's like bouncing a ball. He's like, I'll let you play with the bouncy ball if you wear it for your mom. I'll give you a marshmallow. <laughs> for your... We're good parents. So 
I'm hoping that in the winter time it'll be cold. She'll like it. If not, that's fine. It's super cute. And I will find a child who will wear it. Um, so that is my last finished object. I think we should call it the more more. Oh yeah. And I wrote the pattern for this. It's just a super simple thing. I might write it up and put it up for free on Ravelry and Ribbler. So I wrote it up, but I know it is very niche to do baby garments. Not that knitting isn't niche already, but I know there is not always a market for baby patterns and that kind of thing. So if you are interested, I just, I can write it up and it's super easy to, it's a good first steak because it's a baby sweater. So it's kind of, it, I knit it up in like three days. It's kind of low risk. It's, if you don't, if it doesn't turn out, well, it wasn't, you didn't spend $150 on a sweater's quantity of indie dyed yarn, right? So low risk. What was the weight of the yarn? It was in Swedish, Chaley. Well, you could guesstimate. I think it's, I think it's a sport weight. I think oh. it's, a, it's, I think it's a sport weight. I like it. Okay. It's heavy. I mean, it's cold in Sweden. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> We've never been. I wish so. That would be cool. That would be cool. Okay. Whip, whip a Whips. I got twos. How many? I got dose as well. Oh, I'll go first. Okay. So I, we finished the sweaters and I think I just need to cleanse the palette. So I cast on another pair of socks and these are just vanillas. Um, but I have it in my Rugrats bag by Gabrielle Koizumi of Slip Slip Sis. This is the teeny tiny version. I like to call this the Lottie size um, of them. And sometimes I think I'm the big one. That's okay. I'm gonna let that one go. Uh, we can call that one the Karen after our mother. Uh, she, she's Lottie is my daughter, by the way, my, my 18 month old. Oh yeah, her. So this is my Lottie size bag, the wee thing. Um, and I am working on these socks. We won this game. Cha, what did we win this for? Something. We enter oh. a lot of things. Do you remember what we entered? Is this Onyx Fiber Arts? It is. It is Onyx Fiber Arts in the Sybil sock. Sybil sock. Sybil I think, I think this was a sock knit along. Was this what you entered your witchy socks into and I entered yes. my other socks into? Yes, it was a knit along on Instagram that was hosted by Onyx Fiber Arts and Serendipitous Wool and I believe another dyer who I've forgotten, I apologize, this was like a year ago, um, where you needed to use, I believe it was both a um, BIPOC dyer and a BIPOC designer um, sock patterns. So that's what Chaley and I did. And Chaley and I, y'all, we love prizes. We love supporting small business. We love knitting, but y'all love everything else. We love competition and prizes. Like most people are like, I'm not a competitor. We're insanely competitive. I don't need the prize. I need the prize. Like I need the prize. A thousand percent. So we, I entered us into the giveaway with, um, you had to into the knit along and we won the skein of gorgeous yarn. But we didn't quite know whose sock won. So obviously it was only fair that we split. It was probably her sock, but she knew I was going to be sad if she got this game and I didn't get any, so she split with me. So this is my half and I just started the cuff. I'm doing a knit two, purl two for it. And I actually just bought this. I didn't even tell you that I bought this. This is a Kate Cozy from Cookie and Bees. It's part of the like dope women creating. <gasps> Um, I love Cookie and Bees, her cozies. Isn't this so cute? And like, I, I know I have the yarn bag, but like project bag, but I couldn't, like, I wanted to use all the things because I also have like Wonder Woman on here. Like I was just like, I use all my stuff on my socks. So I just started those and I'm going to do a contrast heel and toe using this hot color. I'm in a really like cheesy place in my life. I think where I want all the colors I use to look like cheese. Uh, and this is actually called Golden Goose and it's from Birch Dye Works. So I'll just do a simple vanilla sock. Um, on these, I'll use do an afterthought heel for it. I cast on 56 stitches and I'm using nine inch circulars from Chow Goo, size one. My turn? Your turn. 
Okay, so we're not, we're going to have to be cagey about the next things we're talking about because they may be secret designs. Um, so we'll show you the yarn. We'll talk to you about it. Um, we are working on some patterns for Advent this year. I Some people call them countdown to winter box. People call them countdown boxes because um, they're not truly Advent. Um, in the Christian tradition, um, Advent, you know, is each week um, leading up to Christmas. It's on the Sundays. There's, you know, the three purple candles and the pink candle. Um, we're Catholic, by the way. Um, I'm also a history teacher. That's why I say things like in the Christian tradition. Um, so uh, every year we always get Advent boxes. Shaylee loves them. Um, Shaylee got the shitty Christmas in July. Christmas in July advent um calendar from dragon horde yarn we have a youtube video about that so you can click on that and check that out if you want so we always get advent boxes or we get 12 days of christmas boxes those kind of things i made chaley one but every year i'm not worried i really struggle with what am i going to make with this right like i love the opening but then i get overwhelmed by now owning 24 new mini skeins which is neat Totally me. Chaley does not get overwhelmed. Uh, last year I made the Scrappy V back tee and that was really great. Um, but we really like socks. We're not in a place where we feel like we can grade sweaters right now. So that's a whole other beast. I, hats off to the designers and tech editors who grade, but that's not where I am. So we are working on um, some scrappy patterns for um, socks to use up for your advent where it doesn't use up all of your mini skeins but it does give something that you can knit along each day especially if you're like me. I always see these knitters that have so much time to do that but I've got a toddler and I work you know we work full-time jobs so sometimes you only get 10 or 15 minutes of knitting a day and if you really want to keep up with your advent like trying to knit the sweater was really hard to keep up every day because I essentially knit a sweater in 24 days and that was a push for us. So this is kind of a way to keep up. It's our kind of little spin on it. We've got, we're working, we think, with a dyer. So we're gonna keep it kind of cagey, not show the whole design, that kind of thing. So I have two designs going. Mine are texture-based and Chaley's is a color work-based one. Um, so what I've got going on, let's see if I can do this well so i picked a color palette and Che can show her color palette oh, i just dropped one on the ground there's gonna nice. be there's no nice. graceful way for me to get it and then pop back up so here it goes like a daisy <laughs> so i did um a the kind of palette that i picked for one of the designs is like a moody purple vibe it's swampy it's, a little bit swampy yeah it's like um i don't know it makes me think of like gothic spring, which doesn't make any sense, right? Because those are oxymorons, but I felt like that went. Um, the yarns are from, I think Molly Klein Design, Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations Advent Color from a couple of years ago, and um, Earl Grey Fiber Company's um, The Office Advent Calendar that my husband got for me last year. It was amazing. Truly amazing. That one was great. Everyone's advent calendars are great. So that's my moody palette. Um, I don't want to show you my whole shebangle yet, but I've got the cuff going. And then I'm working on the bottom, which is going to be kind of like a fade. So you can, the, the center chunk is my lace section. That's why it's like censored. Um, I'm working on kind of doing a fade of the colors in ribbing so that it's not so abrupt striping, but a little bit of a gradual situation. I always see all these great patterns, but then they say things like fade the colors in. And I'm like, what does that mean? How knit, how many rows do? What? So I'm figuring it out. I think that's like Chaley's um, Schitt's Creek fold in the cheese, but, but how do you, how do you fold in the fade? You just fade, just fade. fade the color. Okay, I'll just fade them. <laughs> so I'm working on writing out instructions on how I'm going to try and make this fade happen. So that is one of our designs we're working on. So it looks stripey, but a little bit gradient at the same time. So that's one of my heavily textured ones. Shaylee, do you want to try and casually show yours? Yeah, I don't think I can show it because it's just there. 
So this is the bag that it's in, also made for me by my sister. The fabric is Fig Tree and Company. The inside is so cute. It has clocks, which I think is just adorable. And this is a great size because it's actually holding like a full skein of yarn and like 12 minis in here. And there is plenty of room for like goldfish, beef jerky, and like a water bottle. <laughs> the essentials when you're knitting. Obviously, obviously. I learned from camping that next time I'm going to bring beef jerky. I also wanted to mention, I am not vegetarian, but I had to eat vegetarian for the 24 hours. In addition to me being in a camping environment, I was not happy about. So now I'm just like, where can I put meat? Like, where can I store meat just in case? It's like now in my like consciousness. Um, but my main color that I'm using for this design is Arabian Sea. Um, from Love Dr. that color. Isn't that, it's like kind of not doing the color justice. It's making it really dark, but it is like a lot brighter. Um, mm -hmm. It's really beautiful turquoise. And so that's going to be the main color. And I'm using, um, Sorry, I almost dropped all the stitches off the needles. A variety of mini skeins. I'm using Molly Klein Design uh, Sweet Tea Yarn Advent. Sorry, it's a hair. And I'm also using a collection of my like row one yarns, like this one's Pancake and Lulu, Green Earth. Love it. And these are more Molly Klein Design Thingaroos that I'm using, also known as mini skeins. And like this one is Asylum Fibers and it's called Dark Arts. I'm really going for like a blue green kind of like cool color uh, vibe for my design. Uh, and it is gonna be color work. Like my sister said, uh, it's twisted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it just <laughs> it's a twisted rib cup. And that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll hopefully be able to show more soon. I feel a little bit like Kay, the crazy sock lady who only shows a little bit of their design. But um, like I said, we're collaborating with someone. So we want to kind of keep it under wraps. Um, I have a third design that we're work I'm working on as well. I'll show you the back because the pattern's on the front. Um, so this is a little bit, ooh, mine's blowing. This is blowing out. I don't know if I can address that. Maybe, did I fix it? Yeah, I can see it. All right, um, it, this is a yellow. So I think that's why it's blowing out a little bit. Um, this is the beach, like 50 gram set from Molly Klein Design um, that we've been, that I've been kind of using. I saw, I used a little bit of it in my rune sweater. It's just kind of been peppered in. Um, so it's got a pattern on the front and then I'm just going up and striping it with this. Um, so we've got a couple things going to see where it is. We're hopefully gonna chat with the dyer soon about what's going on. <laughs> and I'm a total teacher in where I, Shaylee's like, I finished one. I'm like, okay, so we're I'm gonna have like six options. And <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, out of one good one. This is how I, these designs have really given me trouble. I've ripped it out at least 18 times. Um, my poor husband has like sat with me and I'm like, it's so ugly. It's so bad. <laughs> it looks like whole. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Maybe I'll send Chaley the pictures and she can post my rejects. It was bad. At one point it was like bulbous and like <laughs> it could be bulbous. Or <laughs> it was really bad. There was like a lump. It had like a goiter. It just... <laughs> This was a feat. I've been working on it for about three or four days and I'm a teacher on summer break. So I actually have a decent amount of time that I've been like ripping it out, pulling it up. My poor yarn is so frayed at this point because <laughs> I pulled it out. I taught myself all these new things. I taught myself how to do Estonian buttons because I thought I wanted to include that. I didn't, there's no Estonian buttons, but I did learn a couple other new really cool techniques that are super cool and my sister's gonna roll her eyes because I always make her test knit for me. So she's gonna be like, what? You want me to do what? 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 Gabs, yeah. So stay tuned. We'll hopefully be able to talk more. We'll hopefully actually have them, one of them finished by September, but you know, 
If not, we'll still hopefully come up with patterns that we can release for you all to. We do out. have some coming out. Drought Tolerant comes out August 20th. I We were super fortunate to get accepted into a couple of design publications. Actually, I have three samples that I am supposed to be knitting, but I haven't received the yarn yet. So it's not my fault. So um, we've got a couple of things going on with that, we've got lots of designs coming out. We're excited. Do you want to do acquisitions, Jay? Oh, yeah. Do you have any gifts? I have one. I have one acquisition. I have a basket. Jay, there's probably like 500. She's like, it's ridiculous. So Chaley came, I think we talked about it last podcast. Chaley came to visit over the 4th of July and there was, we went to Fillery Yarn um, and they were having a sale because they always have really great sales. And I got this super great really pretty purple skein of mohair. It is called by Whimsical Colors, hand dyed on San Juan Island. Here's the tag. Oop. Ooh, raspberry. Yes. Um, it is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. It is super, super, super pretty. I know you were like, but didn't you just say she didn't like mohair? Yeah, mohair sweaters, but I think I could do this really cool shawl situation with it and then it won't be so itchy and I'll be fine. If not, my sister will inherit this as well, but it was on discount and I loved it. And I love purple, purple. I love purple. I'm wearing purple. It's like my daughter knows like four colors. One of them is purple. She knows purple and black. So that is my one and only acquisition. I, it's, it's who I am. Chaley and your acquisition bucket. I also went to the yarn store and I bought nothing. <laughs> I bought lots of things. I also got mohair in the sale. I have four others of three others of these. I don't know how to say this word for the name of the yarn, but this is the name. It was made in Tuscany. It's this really kind of great, like lavender gray color that I really have been vibing with. It matches like all her decorations and what she's wearing right now. Really part of my color palette right now in my life. I wonder if there's a name of it. Ah, yes. 3837. That is the color that I'm fighting with. 3837. So I'm really excited. I have another uh, yarn from Earl Grey Fiber Company I bought a while ago that I think I'm going to make a sweater um, with this with. And then I also... Um, our uncle Anthony is so hard to buy. Does anyone else have like a family member who you're like, oh God, it's their birthday. Oh God, it's Christmas. I have to get him a present. And he likes weird. He only likes like really like niche, like things that are like way out of my budget. So he learned that we are love knitting and we love yarn. So now he buys us yarn all the time and so we discovered that we could just make him things and as like nieces when you like receive something from a niece you're like I love it so we just make him things so I bought this yarn um from Lavender Loon Yarn Company it's called Ursa Minor and I'm gonna design something especially for our uncle Anthony um, and use this yarn for it. He's also a math teacher. So I'm thinking something maybe very geometric for him. Cause then it like, again, me with the present, I'm like so thoughtful. I designed these socks, especially for you, Anthony. Like, ah. So that's what this yarn is for. It had a purpose. I also just loved it. And so I'll buy him salami. Yes. Yes. So those are my purchases from Fillery Yarn. Um, Rebel Woolworks a while ago was doing a, what's it called? Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign. I've forgotten what it was for, to be honest. I'm hoping my sister remembers. So she is trying to become a brick and mortar um, so it, she was in a, she was in a competition, a local business competition with her, um, like the city council. So she was able to enter, but she had to have so much seed money. So she had a Kickstarter to do that. Um, and all of us got like super invested in it and we all got it. But Chaley is the only one whose package has a, probably been yeah. ordered first. Husband was like the, like the one that like pushed her over the edge. He's like a total weirdo about something, but like, he like watches things like a hawk. So he like, 
completed the Kickstarter, which was very exciting and a point of pride for the Koizumi Stone family. But I got one of like, for the level of that we contributed to the Kickstarter, we got a skein of yarn for it. So this was the skein of yarn that we got. It is called Dreams. It is a, ooh, 70-30 superwash merino nylon, 437 yards. And so I think this is, just, I feel very like nature-y in this. I went camping for 24 hours. Now I'm like feeling very connected to nature. Um, so this will probably also be socks or maybe like a fun towel for it too. Is it still, it's still me because you only bought one thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, oh, <laughs> so right before we went shopping at Fillory Yarn, Earl Grey Fiber Company, who we love, announced that she was doing like a sale. And I'm like, Gabs, I'm not going to shop the sale because I know I'm going to go to the yarn store with you. And then I was like, I'm just, I'm going to look. I'm just, I'm going to look. And it's, and it's fine. And then there were sock sets on deep discount where I felt like it would be wrong for me to not purchase the sock sets because they were at such a great price. So I got this sock set, it's called Just Desserts. It's a her Darjeeling sock base, which is 7525 Superwash Merino. Um, I love the, this is a great color. Like it's both pink and purple, it's purple. Um, our custom colorway of uh, slip slip sis. And so we have no custom colorway. We don't know how to dye yarn. We don't know how to dye yarn, but when hope one day per pinkle will be a thing and it will be amazing. That's how we'll know we've like peaked in life when we have a colorway called per pinkle. But love this again, probably some sort of sock concoction. It will be. Um if you watched our earlier podcast, uh, you know I'm a subscriber for the Inner Circle um, with Hypnotic Yarn. This is my, this is the butterfly one that I was talking about. So I think this is the June Inner Circle color. And the butterfly is the Western Azure. I could be pronouncing that wrong. If so, I apologize. But look at this like fun, nice blue. I like it. I love it. And I kind of like has these nice dark spots in it. So it's not just a plain tonal, but it could also kind of like help, you know, bring a piece together and it's ground it ground it. Thank you. Yes. It's plush sock. It's 50 grams, 220 yards, 85 superwash merino, 15% nylon. I am also a scriber, as I've already mentioned, for the Row One Yarn Carnival of Color subscription. And I got last month's for that. And it was Lane and Lotus Fiber Company. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. Hey, Sneezy McGee. Uh, the mohair. I'm trying to talk here, Gabrielle. Um, so this is my uh, subscription that I got for them. You get. 10, 10 gram, yeah, I'm counting right, 10, 10 gram minis, and it's a different dyer every month, which is really exciting, um, because you get to see different folks yarns and learn, like, I've never heard of Lean and Lotus, but I really like this color scheme that's happening here. It's really fitting my palette right now, so now I can go check out their website, and um, what I love is that each color has a little label on it, so that you know, remember, so if you toss it into something, like, you, and you, it's not in a nice bag, um, you know who the dyer was and what the color was. So if you're like, I need this dusty rose, let me go get a big one. You can go find it. <laughs> Love that. And we, which is probably what I'm going to go do after this. Um, we also got every time you get like a little candy in it, that's probably already gone because I ate it. Um, and you get a stitch marker. And this one was a Lotus this time. And I have a Lotus tattoo on my back. So this one like really spoke to me this time. I am also in this place in my life where I am like obsessed with Desert Vista Dye Works, have never knit with her yarn. I just keep collecting it. And I don't, I don't know why I haven't knit it yet, but I'm just like, I just want to hoard it. Cause it feels, cause maybe cause like she's died to order. So it takes a couple of weeks to get it that I feel like I need to like hold it and savor it when I receive it. And I don't want to like release it into the knitting yet. So 
I've gotten two orders um, of the things that I've done so far. I'm still waiting on two orders. One shipped yesterday, which I'm really excited about. It is her Halloween colors. Um, so I got something from that. And I, then I got something for you. That's the thing you want to gouge, which you can talk about afterwards. Um, and so the first thing I got, this was, and then way that I love, which is actually happening right now is at the end of the month, she decided that every day, every end of the month is cake day. And I'm like, I respect that. And I can get on board with that. So she does a cake day celebration um, where she selects certain colorways and they're on sale. So I just keep shopping those. Um, so I got this from one of the cake day celebrations. This is Zombody Wolverine, um, like the superhero. It is her sock weight, uh, 7525 squash merino and nylon self-striping very excited to one day knit this up and then i don't i feel like i've mentioned this we did maybe in our first podcast i love dinosaurs so I oh you up, got your urinaceous no yes i got that it was right before our first podcast and so growing up i watched land before time ad nauseum like i felt like I wanted to be all of them. Like, yep, yep, yep. Yes. And I kind of felt like my sister was like Sarah, the Triceratops, because she was kind of a bully. My sister didn't really like me for like, you know, the first, you know, 13 years of my life. So that was nice. So I like understood how the other dinosaurs felt being friends with Sarah. And I just loved it. I had a, one of my birthdays was dinosaur themed. So when I saw that she had a Land Before Time themed self-striping yarn called Zom Dinos, I was like, okay, oh, head to cart, <laughs> buy immediately, don't even wait. And that is what this colorway is. And I actually think it kind of reminds me of Christmas too. And the colors, I think the like, inspiration image was like a picture of Petrie, who is the pterodactyl, and Ducky, who was the, duck nose build um, dinosaur, which the name is escaping me at this moment. Clearly not that great of a fan. I'm disappointing myself, um, but I got this. And so I'm very excited for the next set of things to come probably Monday or Tuesday. And so I will show that next time. And those are all of the things that I have received. Not that I've just bought because I'm waiting on quite a few things that I've received this month. Why don't you tell them about the self striping that you had me get for you? Oh, totally forgot about it. So uh, Chaley and I, oftentimes we've talked about this before, we combine to save on shipping um, and then we trade later on. So I get super overwhelmed um, with lots of yarn, which is the opposite of my sister. Um, but <laughs> um, I decided that this year advents were maybe a lot. There's like I'm going back to teaching in person, so I won't have as much time. I teach obviously through December, that kind of thing. Um, so I asked Chaley to pick out uh, Desert Vista Dyrex has, um, I think she's got like, she has four color stripes, five color stripes, six color stripes, eight. Um, eight. So I think I asked Chaley to get me a 12 color stripe from Desert Vista Dye Works. And then I'm gonna get my husband to secretly skein up that one for me. And then I'm gonna put it in one of um, Brand's super cute Cookie and Bees cozies. And then as I knit, so that's gonna kind of be my advent. So it'll be a mystery to me what it looks like um, for advent this year. And then I'll do a stripe a day. I know there were lots of lovely, fabulous dye, dyers who were doing self-striping for Christmas, but I really, I couldn't handle all of the, like having to do the time, like set a timer, set a reminder. It, it got stressful. So I decided to do a little bit low key. My sister, on the other hand, probably bought like six advent calendars, but I don't mind. It's fine. I actually was like, oh no, I ran out of space for my minis. What, what am I to do? stop by me no i said i took myself and i got myself a whole new bucket for my minis ah, it was sticky it was great yeah so that's what's going on with us i actually have a i have a yarn advent calendar that i haven't opened yet from 2019 um and the reason i didn't open it was it was a 12 days and i was going to open it um on the 12 days, like how 12 days is truly celebrated 
um, between the 25th of December and January 6th, the epiphany um, in 2019. So, and I was going to, I bought my, my husband bought it for me. It was like my Christmas present. And we were going to do that because it was supposed to be the countdown to baby that it would keep me busy and it would keep me occupied. It would keep me stress, oh, stress free of waiting for baby because my daughter was due January 11th. So it's like, this is perfect. I'll have something. I was, I had a shawl pattern picked out. I was like, I'm going to wear a shawl in the hospital with us and it's going to be great. And it's going to be sweet. No. Yes. I've heard that it goes really well when you try and plan ahead for your babies. Yeah. You so, you know, if you've given birth, you know, none it does not go the way you plan. My daughter arrived on December 16th before Christmas. So I never opened it. And I had some uh, complications with her birth. It was not a, it was not easy. So I never got around to opening it. Understatement of the century. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was very bad. Um, but this is, this is a knitting podcast. This is not a mommy blog. Um, so it was tricky for me. It was a tricky time for all of us. I never opened it. And then I was like, well, I can't, I can't open it, not in Christmas. Cause that, so then this year I was like, okay, I'll open it. But then I bought myself an advent calendar that my husband was so sweet. He bought me once so I had two advent calendars and then, you know, I get overwhelmed with the mini skeins. So I was like, I'm overwhelmed. So this year, right. That's gonna gonna go it. really well. Come back in December and see if I opened it. I'm going to open the dang thing. Yeah. I think that's all we have for you. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us for episode three of the Slip Slip Sis podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, and we'll see you next time. Bye.